What are the various configurations involved in the Comstack? Let's explore about the configuration part in our today's video. Hello everyone, welcome to Link Frequency and I'm Ashwarya Patta. This video is part of a course that is Introduction to Autosa. So without any further delay, let's get started. The layered architecture of Autosa was discussed in detail in our previous video. Now, let us discuss about the Autosa communication stack configuration with respect to CAN bus protocol. Communication stack with respect to CAN protocol consists of Autosa COM module, PDU router, CAN state manager, and CAN transport protocol from the service layer, CAN interface and CAN trans receiver driver from ECU abstraction layer, and lastly, CAN driver from MCAL layer. The screen represents the communication stack of the CAN protocol. In this particular video, we will see some of the configurations involved in this communication stack. Let us start with the Autosa COM module. The COM module is placed at the top of the CAN communication stack. Autosa COM is a module between the RTE and PDU router. The COM module handles all the signal going to and from the RTE as a sender and receiver signal. It packs the signals to a PDU at the transmitter and unpacks the received PDU to provide signal level access to the application at the receiver. COM supports monitoring of received signals to notice possible signal timeouts. The COM module has two main containers that is COM General and COM Config. Let's try to understand both of them. COM General has some important parameters, that is, COM configuration use DET. It is basically a Boolean value. If this is set to on state, then any error shall lead to the call of API function that is dead report error. The next one is COM version info API. It is a boolean parameter which is used to activate or deactivate the version information of the API. The next parameter is COM retry fail transmit request. Retry of fail transmission request is enabled if this parameter is set to true. The next parameter in the COM general is COM supported IPDU groups. It is an integer parameter which basically tells the maximum number of supported IPDU groups. Moving on to the COM config. It has four types of containers that is COM signal, COM IPDUs, COM IPDU groups and lastly the COM signal groups. Let's see some of the parameters in each of the containers. COM IPDUs. It contains the following parameters such as COM PDU ID reference which basically provides reference to the global PDU structure of the COM stack. The next one is COM IPDU group reference. It refers to the IPDU group to which this IPDU belongs to. Moving on to next one that is COM IPDU signal reference. This provides reference to all the signals that are indicated in the IPDU. The next parameter is COM IPDU signal group reference. This basically provides reference to all the signal groups that are included in the IPDU. The last parameter is COM IPDU signal processing. It is used to configure when the signal indication takes place either in immediate mode or in deferred mode. Moving on to the next one that is COM IPDU groups. It has parameters such as COM IPDU group handle ID and COM IPDU group reference. Moving on to the COM signals. This involves very important parameters that has to be taken care, such as COM transfer property, which basically has the signal can trigger the transmission of the corresponding IPDU. It contains options such as triggered, pending, triggered, on change, triggered without repetition, triggered, on change without repetition. So you can select any one of the options based on your requirement. It also contains COM bit position which basically indicates the starting position of the signal in the IPDU. It has the bit size that basically indicates the size of the signal in the bit. Then there is one more parameter that is COM signal Indianness. The Indianness of the signal can be represented here that is it can either be big Indian or little Indian. It also contains COM signal init values which basically you can set the init value or the default value of the signal. There is COM timeout factor which indicates the timeout period for the deadline monitoring. Additionally, you can find the parameter like COM signal type which basically indicates the type such as boolean, unsigned int 8 and so on. COM signal also includes the parameter that is COM timeout notification. The name of the function to be called on the sender or the receiver side if the timeout occurs is indicated in this particular parameter. Let's move ahead to COM signal groups. 
This also has the parameters like the COM signal that has to be configured such as COM bit position, COM bit size and so on. If at all we want to send or receive several signals in the same IPDU then these signals can be clubbed together in the form of a signal group. Well, now let's move ahead and try to understand about the PDUR. PDUR module provides routing path within the CAN communication stack. It is a part of service layer. It has various containers that can be configured and let's look into them individually. The first one is PDR General, which contains PDR version info API. If this parameter is set to true, then the PDR get version info API is made available. PDR General also includes PDR dev error detect. It basically has the detection and notification of the error. Then moving on to PDR routing tables. PDR routing table consists of PDR max routing path count, that is, it gives the maximum number of routing paths in all the routing tables. It also has the PDR configuration ID, which provides identification of the configuration of the PDR configured, which is read using a PDR API. There is also PDR source and destination information that can be configured in this particular PDR which basically has the parameters such as PDU handle ID and PDU reference that has to be configured. Moving on to the next one that is CAN TP. The basic service offered by CAN TP module are segmentation of message which have a payload of more than 8 bytes, transmission of the message with flow control and assembling the segmented message at the receiver. CAN TP does not have its own buffer so it uses the buffer of the upper layer that is PDUR, DCM or CON. So to maintain the data consistency during Rx or Tx, the buffers are locked. CAN interface interacts with CAN TP by giving the Tx confirmation and Rx indication about the transmitted or received PDU. Well, moving ahead to CAN interface, that is CAN IF. CAN IF is the module in the ECU abstraction layer. This is responsible for services like transmit request, transmit confirmation, reception indication, or controller mode control and PDU mode control. CAN interface initializes the CAN driver module during the startup phase. Let's see some of the parameters that can be configured in this particular module. CAN IF private CFG that basically contains CAN IF private DLC check. So here you can select whether the DLC check is to be supported or not as per your requirement. It also has parameters like CAN IF control driver config which provides configuration parameters for the underlying CAN driver module. It also contains CAN IF init configuration that contains all the init parameters of the CAN interface. It also contains CAN IF TXPDU configuration. It has the information related to CAN IF TXPDU CAN ID, CAN IF TXPDU DLC, CAN IF TXPDU CAN ID type that is whether it is standard format or extended format and also CAN IF TXPDU ID and its type. On the other hand, similarly, you can see RX also has a similar parameters available to configure. I'm not going in detail about this configuration because at this point of time, it might be very confusing. We will discuss about it in our further videos. Moving on to the last one that is CAN driver. The CAN driver is situated at the bottom of the CAN communication stack in the MCAL layer. It provides hardware access to the upper layer within the communication stack. Let's see some of the parameters that can be configured here. That is CAN General. It contains the CAN version info API. You can disable or enable based on your requirements. And the next one is CAN Config Set. It contains configurations of CAN controllers and CAN hardware objects. The parameters involved in this are CAN Controller ID, CAN TX Processing, CAN RX Processing, CAN Bus of Processing and so on. So overall, these are the very few parameters that are discussed in this video just to give you a glance of how you can configure based on the requirements. So this video was all about understanding the Comstack configuration for the CAN protocol. If you have any questions related to any of the things that you have not understood in this particular video, then drop your question in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching our video content. If there are any queries related to the video, you can surely comment down in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.